Hey guys, it's Brandon. I am recording this stock pitch for Maj for the Little Grapevine presentation. And the stock I'm pitching is Odelwine Polsky SA, ticker symbol ODL, and it trades on the Polish Stock Exchange. So ODL, quick background, it's a 121-year-old Polish company specializing in the production of iron castings. They manufacture these casting components. They also do thermal processing, painting, assembly, and distribution of the castings. They're headquartered in Poland, and the company trades foreign castings and provides assistance services to German foundries. Although an old company, ODL is passionate about investing in future technology. The company has its own R&D department, and inside of that, they develop tools to improve production, increase efficiency, and reduce costs, which we'll see later. They've actually spent more than their market cap in R&D over the last 10 years to develop such technology. So the thesis here is pretty simple. It's a small, off-the-radar, $25 million market cap company involved in a business people aren't dying to enter, such as iron castings. Meanwhile, they've grown revenues at 20% per year for the last 10 years, increased EBITDA margins from 3.5%, to 13%, bought back nearly 5% of their stock, and generated enough EBITDA to service their debt 143 times over. The company pays a handsome 6.6% dividend, spits off close to 30% of its earnings back to shareholders, and maintains a fortress balance sheet. At the time of writing this report, the company hadn't released its full year 2019 um, financials, but its tra trailing 12 months to September looked promising. Revenues were 6.5% higher, EBITDA margins grew to 17%, with $26 million in operating income. This compares to $19 million in 2018. All of that with three months to go. Shares are up over 20% since the start of 2020, yet despite the 20% bump, the business trades at a mere four times earnings, two times EBITDA, and around 1.25 and times net asset value. For a company that's crushed every industry growth metric, it tails the industry average EBITDA multiple by three turns, with the average being 5x and ODL at two. A mere re-rating to this industry average gives us nearly 100% upside. And so what's the thesis? There's kind of a few main components about this thesis. First is the monopoly on what's called ADI manufacturing. And ODL has a monopoly in one specific type of manufacturing of iron castings, and it's called ADI cast iron. And there's a couple papers that you can read to kind of figure this out on why ADI is so powerful, but here's the takeaway from this. ADI has a high fatigue strength, higher than aluminum, is resistant to abrasive wear like steel, but most of all, it can be it, its use can significantly reduce the cost of production. And that's kind of the main benefit here is lowest cost producer. It's the only producer. It's the only company that can produce this type of iron casting in Poland. But the, but the benefits don't stop there. The company manufactures iron castings to about seven different industries, machine, machining, automotive, industrial, plumbing and sewage, heavy rail, energy, and appliances. These are very boring end industries to complement the very boring business itself. But let's go back to the paper for a sec. There's one quote that I really like, and it said, ADI is generally recommended as a structural material because of the very encouraging cost of production of parts compared to the cost of other materials. First of all, it offers a very good castability, which enables complex shapes to be reproduced with higher yield and raw castings to have better dimensional accuracy. This, in turn, implies savings in machining. So you have a very much low-cost producer with a monopoly on such a material. So how do we think about earnings and valuation here. So we think that they can grow earnings at least 5% a year over the next five years. They've done about 20% over the next 10 years. But if they're able to increase revenues by 5% a year over the next five years, and they do about 18% EBITDA margins, we're going to end up with 254 million zloty in revenues, 46 million in EBITDA, and 21 million zloty in free cash flow. This free cash flow will expand as EBITDA margins grow, giving us a cumulative $36 million lati in free cash flow by 2023. If we add our terminal value cash flows, we get $256 million in enterprise value. Add in $18 million and subtract $2 million of long-term debt, and you're left with $271 million in shareholder value, or nearly 14 zloty per share. That's around 220% upside over the next five years under conservative estimations. So 
we've got three main risks here. Actually, four main risks. The first risk is a slowdown in end customer industries. The second is a complicated share structure. They have seven share classes, A through G. I normally prefer simple share structures. The third is better technology or products beat out ADI. Right now, ADI is the lowest cost raw material to make iron castings, but who's to say that another material can't be discovered or created in that time? And fourth and final is regional concentration. 60% of the sales come from Germany, so a recession in Germany could really adversely affect the company's sales, earnings, and free cash flow over the next five years.